Virgo to Scorpius, the moon sure gets around. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Hey James, what holds up the moon? Oh no, we're not doing the moon joke episode, are we? No, but it's almost ready. I can't wait. Okay, okay, what holds up the moon? Moon beams, of course. Oh, brother. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now that I've warmed up the crowd. You didn't. Let's talk about the moon. I don't want to spread rumors, but the moon sure gets around. The Earth. It orbits the Earth, Dean. And as it does, so it appears to pass in front of a parade of constellations like Virgo and Libra and Scorpius. Exactly. Next week, you can watch the moon go through some zodiacal constellations. Let's show you. Okay, we're facing west-southwest just after sunset, around 9 p.m. on August 16th. If you have a clear view to the horizon, you might, just might, see the slimmest of waxing crescent moons just above the tree line. If you can see the moon, you might, just might, see the most elusive of the naked eye planets, Mercury, just to the moon's right. You'll only have a tiny window to catch these two between sunset and when they set in the west. By 10 p.m., they're below the ground. But then we can see one bright blue star called Spica. Spica is the brightest star in the constellation Virgo the Maiden. Let's show them the picture. Uh, wow, uh, Virgo takes up a lot of space in the sky and is really hard to picture from just the stars. I know, but she's been an important constellation ever since ancient astronomers figured out that the sun, moon, and planets pass through Virgo, along with 11 other special constellations. Okay, we've shifted our view to the southwest, and Virgo is to the right, and two stars of similar brightness are to the left. The first star isn't really a star. It's the planet Saturn. Sweet, I love Saturn. Mm -hmm. Saturn is in front of another zodiacal constellation, Libra the Scales. Uh, wow, that's even harder to picture than Virgo. Yes, but Libra, like Virgo, was important because the sun, moon, and planets went through it over time as well. And that means the other bright star on the left really is a star. It's the star Antares, the beating heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. Exactly, the constellation of summer. I always love seeing Scorpius scuttle across the southern sky. Now let's throw in the moon and see what will happen next week. It's now 9.30 on the night of August 17th, and the sky isn't completely dark yet, so we'll keep our constellations outlined for you. The moon is a little fuller than it was on the 16th, but it's still a slim crescent. It's moved a little to the left or eastward, since we saw it the night before. Let's move forward one day at a time and see how the moon moves. Here is August 18th. The moon shifted more to the east and is closing in on Spica. And on August 19th, the moon will appear just above Spica. On August 20th, the moon appears at Virgo's feet and is heading towards Libra. And on the nights of August 21st and then 22nd, it has continued on its orbit around the Earth and has appeared to move through Libra. On the night of the 22nd, the moon now is halfway lit up. We call that first quarter. And it is just above and to the left of Saturn. Then on the 23rd, the moon will have continued on its way out of Scorpius. So in about a week, the moon has passed through three zodiacal constellations. And that makes sense, since it takes the moon about four weeks to pass through all 12 zodiacal constellations, or three per week. So this week, look for the zodiacal constellations of Virgo, Libra, and Scorpius in the southwestern sky. The crescent moon will turn into a first quarter moon between August 17th and the 23rd. Be sure to bask in the moonbeams next week as you keep, keep looking, looking up. up.